so now we can actually download these without having to use um, FTP anymore um, in the past we had to use FTP a couple of times to download a few things but uh, this time it's just the one thing so let's start by um, start with GPM by downloading the main package and the patch file so all we need to do is do wget space HTTP colon forward slash and do in dot Linux from scratch dot org. Just copying from here. Capital BLFS. Remember that Unix is case sensitive, so URLs are forward slash GPM forward slash GPM dash one dot two o dot seven dot tar dot bz2 now you can if you like um, download more than one URL within the same wget command so I could put the next the patch file on the same line I'm not going to do that because I might be recalling this wget command if there's anything else at the same address I've just noticed I've got one forward slash missing there so there may, there may be, or even like, for example, this patch file, it's at www.linuxfromscratch.org rather than Anduin. So it just takes, saves a bit of typing uh, and hopefully reduces potential for any typing errors. So I'll just double check this URL. So it's http colon forward slash forward slash Anduin dot linuxfromscratch.org forward slash blfs forward slash gpm forward slash gpm dash 1.20.27.tilerbz2 yep that's good okay we've got that one let's do a quick md5 sum and gpm so bf84 and 2a2b8 yep that's fine so now let's recall that command and modify it to download the patch so it's www.linuxfromscratch.org forward slash patches forward slash ok so now it's blfs in lowercase blfs forward slash 9.1 forward slash gpm dash 1.20.7 dash glib c that will be an underscore there that you can't see because there's, there's underlining but it will be an underscore 2.26-1.patch I'll just quickly eyeball that again make sure it's ok this will scratch to org patches PLFS 9.1 GPM 2.7 GFC 2.6 the worst that can happen here is that it's not found because of a typo but yeah that's that's fine that's downloaded okay so we've done the kernel configuration um, and we've rebooted so we can go straight on to install it uh, well let's extract it first GPM okay so it's come up without the full name because there's a patch file and the patch file's got a a dash and minus after the version number whereas the tar file's got a full stop so we just need to put a full stop in and press tab and um, if that helps we'll put the commands in so the first thing we need to do is type in this set command so this is the sort of thing we've got to be really careful with there's lots of letters and symbols here um, and spaces and they could all make a difference so we've got to be really careful so we're in the sed directory, uh, sorry, the gpm directory, and we can start by typing in this sed command. So sed space minus i space minus e space single quote s colon less than gpm dot h greater than colon double quotes headers. I believe this is a directory. No, it's not. A it's not going to tab headers full slash gpm dot h double quote 
colon single quote space source this is the directory now prog curly bracket display buttons called display hyphen chords comma just gonna scroll it over a little bit get minus versions close curly back it dot C and if you remember that ampersand ampersand is just a continuation of the of these commands to tie them all together to make sure that they the next one runs as long as the previous one has run successfully right so got to be doubly careful with this so I'm just going to check it very carefully set space minus I space minus E space single quote lower s colon less than gpm dot h greater than colon double quotes headers forward slash gpm dot h double quote colon single quote space slc forward slash prog forward slash open curly bracket display hyphen buttons comma display hyphen chords comma get versions close curly bracket dot c so that looks fine let's press enter well there's no output so we don't know if it worked or not arguably you could check these files here to look for these changes um, I'm pretty happy that there was no errors there no mistakes so I'm just going to carry on now with the patch command so patch, let's just move this over. You can see the whole of the grey box. Patch minus NP1 minus I dot dot GPM. Remember it's the dash for the patches. So we don't need to type anything else in. And press enter. And yeah, that's worked. You can see it's patched a couple of files there. So now we run uh, autogen or actually a, a script autogen.sh that's run OK and now we can type the configure command in minus minus prefix equals four slash user with the prefix double check that you've put in the right uh, directory not normally it's just forward slash user I've made the mistake before where I've misspelled it like put in USRT or something, you know, my finger slipped and it means that that package has gone into a directory called USRT when I've installed it. So it's it's a bit weird then if you see you've got a user directory and a USRT directory. Uh, that That's definitely worth double checking that you get that right. Minus minus sysconf. Uh, now these command, these uh, options are quite similar to the previous one for wget. So we could have recalled that command and borrowed those commands there to do this um, but not to worry we've done it this way now so let's just double check we've got configure minus minus prefix equals four slash user minus minus sysconf dir or one word equals four slash etc yep and there's the config running and it's finished so we can run make minus j4 j4 number of cpus i've got if you want to know how many cpus you've got you can do either proc CPU info. Um, if you do it this way, actually, you need to interrogate the output carefully um, because you see um, the first core. It's, it tells you how many siblings there are in this this core in this physical CPU. But if you're on a, a twin or quad CPU machine, each one of those physical CPUs they're all going to have four siblings, but you're actually going to have, if it's a twin CPU machine, you're actually going to have um, eight cores, four on each CPU. So um, if you do do it with PROC, you, you have to examine um, the actual physical ID. So you can see this processor has got a physical ID of zero. There, oh, uh, this is not scrolling because the logos are there let's just reset the screen and run that again yeah so this this is the physical 
uh, ID zero. This is a physical CPU, and it's got four siblings um, and the four cores. And this is the core ID zero, so the next one should be one. So there you go, same physical what, single processor, the first processor, but this is the next core on, but it's still four siblings and four cores. As I say, if you're on a twin CPU, physical CPU machine, you'll get another four um, cores output, but the physical ID will be one. And likewise, if you've got four, four CPUs, it'll be two and three and so on. Uh, an easier way is there's a command called nproc which tells you how many um, cores you've got available. So you could actually, in theory, rather than doing make, make minus j4, arguably you could do something like nproc, something like that, because that will convert the command nproc into the digit 4 and pass it into make minus j. So if you did something like echo dollar nproc, See, it comes out with four, so that's what would be passed to the make command. So I'll, I'll try that just to demonstrate it. I'm not sure if we'll see four cores running, but you can see it ran anyway. It ran quite quickly as well, so I'm no doubt that it did, did actually run on four cores. But normally I just do minus J4 because it's, it's a lot easier to type. So there's no test suite for GPM, so all we can do is install it, but as you can see, there's lots more typing to do for installing, so again, we've got to be really careful. So let's start by doing the make install command. Okay, and now we start typing in, I'm just going to highlight each one of these so I know what I'm doing, so I don't start looking across at the wrong line, because some of these are quite similar. So install, this is a command so we should be able to tab it, there we go. Minus minus dir hyphen file equals, again this is now a pass so we can tab here. Share info dir, that's not, ta yeah that is a, a directory or a file. And as you can see this is now a continuation so you can either put that in and type on a new line. I'm not going to tend to do that unless it's a really long line. I'm just going to carry on typing um, as if I was typing this myself by hand um, and then not copying from the screen. So I'm going to copy this into forward slash user share info and it's going to be called gpm.info. That's done. So the next command is that one there. So ln minus f sfv lib gpm dot so. I'm not sure if I can oh, type that correctly. Lib gpm dot so dot two dot one dot o forward slash user lib lib gpm dot so so let me just check that <clears throat> ln minus svf lib gpm dot so dot two dot one dot zero space forward slash user forward slash lib forward slash lib right okay there's a mistake there lib gpm dot so Okay, so that's correct. I'm now going to run this command here. Install minus v minus m 644 conf forward slash gpm dash root dot conf and that's getting put into etc. And what this uh, command is saying is install this, this file into this directory and set it with these permissions 644 and do it verbosely so we'll get an output similar to that saying what it's done. So that looks correct. Press enter. So there's the confirmation of what we've just done. Now I'll do this command here. 
So install minus V minus M755. So this is the directory because we've got a minus D and the permissions are different. Pull slash user pull slash share doc gpm dash one dot two o dot seven pull slash support let's check that install minus v minus m seven five five is the full slash user share doc gpm 1.20.7 full slash support so basically this is just creating that directory with those permissions that's what this is doing for us and as you can see it's created two, two directories actually this one gpm 1.20.7 and 1.20.7 full slash support so this is the next command uh, what I'm going to do is recall the previous one because it had the 644 in it and I'll just delete this lot and type in doc forward slash support star and that's going into user share doc gpm 1.27 and support that's the directory we just created so assuming the previous one was correct which it did look all right and this one looks right. That should copy successfully. And there you go. And lastly, we've got a very similar command. So again, I'm going to recall it. And I'm going to delete the bit that's different. So it's doc, but this time it's in curly brackets. There's several files FAQ, hack underscore GPM, and read me star close bracket and that's being put into user share doc gpm but no support so once again let's just double check install minus v minus m644 doc forward slash open with curly bracket faq in capitals hack underscore gpm in capitals and read me star in capitals close curly bracket space forward slash user share doc gpm 1.20.7 and that seems to work correctly as well so some explanations about the commands we just run so the next thing we need to do is we need to install a boot script and there's a package for that that the BLFS team have given us so let's open that up in another terminal Let's, oh dear, I don't know why I keep clicking on that, I don't need to. Let's go back up one to the sources directory and fetch this. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> I never went back to the sources when did GPM, so I've actually built GPM inside the wget directory, but that's not a problem. Um, we'll get rid of that when we finish GPM. So I'm back in the BLFS directory where I should have been. Um, and we need to download this file here so we need to do the wget but i'm hoping that the yep there it is see the anduin.linux from scratch address is still here so it saves us typing this all in all we need to do is get rid of the package directory and package name and type in the new one that we want So it's BLFS boot scripts, BLFS boot scripts dash 2019 1204.tar.xz. So just double checking that again. BLFS in capitals, BLFS boot scripts, BLFS boot scripts dash. 2019 and yeah that's it there okay so one thing I need to do before I delete the wget directory is move the gpm uh, 
tab all outside of the wget directory before I delete the wget otherwise we'll lose it in case we need to reinstall this in fact yeah do tab uh, bz and move that here and let's do the patch as well so yeah there's the uh, two files that we've got for gpm So we've got the BLFS boot scripts, let's extract it now. And I won't be deleting this directory because we'll be needing some of the other boot scripts for other packages we'll be, del uh, we'll be installing in future um, when we're completing other parts of BLFS. But for now we'll just go into BLFS and we'll run this uh, make install GPM command and that will install the boot scripts to activate GPM on startup and to deactivate it on shutdown. So make install hyphen GPM and then we've got a configuration file so um, what we can do is again we can't copy and paste, normally I'd copy and paste this and then use via to modify it. Um, obviously we can't copy and paste at the moment so what I'm going to do is do, just do vi straight away on this file here, etc sysconfig mouse. So forward slash etc sysconfig mouse. I'm just going to press I and just start typing and copy this in by hand. Begin forward slash etc forward slash sysconfig forward slash mouse. What I'm actually going to do is come out of edit mode, delete that and paste that twice and change this to end just to get that comment in at the end. Then I can start typing the actual configuration in the middle. So there are some uh, examples here this these generally work these options here so um, unless you've got some um, strange mouse I mean maybe a laptop touchpad might need to be different as it says here you can run GPM M device uh, minus help to get a, uh, a listing of what what um, a hardware driver you need to, to get the mouse supported properly uh, but generally if you're using like a USB mouse as I am or a um, any other sort of mouse like that, a wireless mouse for example, uh, this will generally work. If you're using a, a PS2 mouse, um, you need to change the dev input mice to dev PS aux, but I wouldn't imagine you're using that unless you're using quite an old machine, you know, more than sort of 5 or 10 years old. So I'll just copy these settings here, full slash dev, full slash input, full slash mice. And this is obviously a hardware device, you could actually check this to see if you have actually got that device. And if you haven't, then you know that you may need to run this command to find out what hardware device you have got. Protocol equals IMPS2 and gpm opts equals, that's just an empty string. So once again I'm just checking it visually, make sure there's no spelling mistakes or um, symbols in the wrong place and it looks okay. Save that and that's it. So at the moment it's obviously not running because we haven't started it. We could reboot the machine but as you probably already know with Linux, you generally don't need to reboot to activate things or deactivate things. And indeed, we can just do etc init.d forward slash gpm start. And that's just run the boot script we installed and it's activated the mouse service. And indeed, if I start moving the mouse on the computer, you see I've now got a cursor and we can highlight text and right click and it pastes the text exactly where it 
where, we, where the cursor is. So we've got this feature now where we can copy and paste in the text console, which is really useful. It's going to be really useful when we get the browser installed. So now let's tidy up. Let's find out where we are in the boot scripts. Let's go back one. We should be at BLFS. We are. Um, so if you remember, I accidentally um, built GPM inside WGET. So if I do a listing of WGET, you'll see somewhere amongst there. Uh, yeah, there's the directory there, GPM. So by de deleting the WGET get directory, which I forgot to delete, um, we'll be deleting the GPM directory as well, the build directory. So we're all back to how we were. We've got still got the WGET package in case we need to, well, we will be using it again. And we've got the GPM and its patch um, in in, just in case we need to use them. I don't think it had any dependencies. So, um, no. So very unlikely we'll be needing to build that again. 